It's Friday night, Atlanta. Time to rise up tonight with Kelly Price and Harry Douglas. Presented by AT&T. What's up, Atlanta? We're back for one last hurrah, as are the Atlanta Falcons. I may be at home on the COVID list, but in the studio, as always, is Harry Douglas, former Falcons wide receiver. Um, Harry, it's a college ending kind of to this season with the rivalry here at the end with the Saints, don't you think? Kelly, it's rivalry week, and since it's rivalry week, <laughs> I love to sweep. And since I love to sweep, it's time for the Falcons to sweep the damn Saints. Yes, they had that opportunity this weekend to sweep the Saints. That means a lot in this city. Broom out. <laughs> if it's not singing, it's a prop from Harry Douglas. Well, Sunday was a roller coaster, no doubt, but when the score went final, it was kind of a juxtaposition of the two teams, right? The Falcons officially eliminated from the playoffs, whereas the Bills, with their win, secured their postseason berth. Three-time Super Bowl champion Deron Harmon talked after the game that he hoped that moment maybe serves as a motivating factor for the younger guys on this team going forward, guys who haven't really seen a ton of success or have been playing in big games like this. Meanwhile, the Saints come marching into Mercedes-Benz Stadium this weekend, um, still in the postseason hunt on their end, and the Falcons could possibly play spoiler. Harry, how do they, the Falcons kind of pick up after that disappointing loss, and maybe they can spoil the Saints' season? Yeah, Kelly, I'll say this. Um, it's already bad after a loss, and I know guys feel the heart of that. But you got to move on, right? You got to go to the next thing. And what's the next thing? Next thing, the New Orleans Saints, your rival. You get to, rival gets to come into the city of Atlanta and Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So you not only do you get a chance to beat them and sweep them this year, you get a chance to knock them off the block so they don't make the playoffs. It doesn't get any better than that, Kelly. It doesn't get any better than that, Kelly. That'd be a pretty sweet ending to this season. Well, the defense on last Sunday did make things difficult for Josh Allen. They clogged up some throwing lanes for him, but the Bills adjusted later in the game. The run game kind of got more going for Buffalo. Uh, that's how they really pulled away in that second half. They had 150 yards rushing in the second half. Meanwhile, we know the Saints will obviously look to run the ball against the Falcons early and often. What adjustments does the Falcons defense really need to make this week so that that doesn't happen this week against New Orleans? Yeah, in the game against the Buffalo Bills this weekend, I didn't think the Falcons did a great job defensively or uh, containing the run. A lot of outside runs was, were hit for big plays. And then the quarterback position, you're going to be facing Taysom Hill, a guy who can rush the football like Josh Allen. So you're going to have to stop the run, not only with the running backs Alvin Kamara and Mark Ingram, but with the quarterback Taysom Hill as well. You got to keep contained. And then when you, when you get blocked, you got to be able to get off blocks. Get off blocks and show the effort and go make the play so you can help stop the run. Because the New Orleans Saints, if they watch the tape from last week, they're going to come in and try to rush the football, not only with their running backs, but with their quarterback Taysom Hill as well. We'd be remiss with this being the last episode of the season to not talk about the season that Kyle Pitts has been having. He's been having a record smashing season this past week. Uh, he passed Julio Jones' rookie receiving re record, and he is just 59 yards shy of having the most ever receiving yards of any tight end uh, who is a rookie. Pitts left Sunday's game with a hamstring injury, so we're not sure what his status might be on Sunday. But given what he's done in 16 games so far, Harry, how do you kind of evaluate number eight's rookie campaign? I think he's had a great year, and the Falcons made the right pick. Uh, fourth overall dra drafting Cal Pitts. He is a organization uh, ch changer. He's a guy that everyone has to uh, have their antennas up defensively if you're going against the Atlanta Falcons. Not only did he pass Tony Gonzalez, Hall of Famer, he passed Julio Jones, his rookie yards, future Hall of Famer. Now he's 58 yards and tying Mike Dick of 59 to break his record, Hall of Famer. What else more needs to be said, Kelly? Yeah. Well, this weekend was obviously a snow game in Buffalo. I got to check off a kind of bucket list item by having a snow game. I had a little Sansa Stark moment with my jacket. And some of the Falcons had some wintry fits as well. Let's check it out in this week's Falcons Fits. The comfiest sweater award goes to Kyle Pitts himself. I just want this sweater. It looks so comfy. I want to touch it. It's like fuzzy. Um, he kind of also gives me like Arthur vibes with the glasses and the sweater. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that cartoon, Harry, but um, overall, 10 out of 10 looks like a comfy fit. Yeah, I actually like the sweater, but it, it, it's one of those sweaters. Like, you remember you used to put those sweaters on when you were a kid and you're like, ah, oh, mom, I'm itching all over the place. It keeps making me itch. And then your mom take the sweater off. <laughs> Next thing you know, you have a rash. Now you got to put Neosporin all on your rash and stuff. But I like the color scheme. I don't know, but it may, if you don't have a t-shirt on underneath, you might be feeling all rashy. 
Maybe he needed a jacket too. It's pretty cold. Well, things escalated quickly in warm-ups for Keith Smith, as you can see here. He's, he's definitely that guy who wore no sleeves and shorts and warm-ups in the literal snow. I mean, he is that guy. He even had like a, I don't even know what you call that. I mean, he looks like he's going to rob a bank with that mask on his face, but hopefully he was warm. Ski, ski mask of my school. I love this look because you know what this look says? I'm not worried about the cold. I'm here to run through your face mask. Keith Smith, the fullback for the Atlanta Falcons. I don't care about no cold weather. I don't care about that. I like that. That lets me know this young man went up there ready to play, ready to do some damage. Care about the elements. Snowy games, true. cold games, it's a part of the elements, Kelly. Keith Smith don't care about all that. A, tr a true fullback uh, mentality. Well, now shout out to rookie Avery Williams. He had that awesome special teams play in the beginning of the game that set up that Falcon safety. And he also had this great fit. He was one of the few Falcons who actually wore a jacket, which I respect. I mean, full puffer jacket, full fur. Um, but I also kind of like the nautical vibes that he has with that shirt underneath and the Falcons beanie, of course, keeping him warm, Harry. Yeah, I'm, I got to give him a little love because he went out there and made a huge play in that game. Right, the first time the Falcons punted, he went out there and put that hat on the foot. Football. I know this is Falcons fits, but he took the football off of the fit of the Buffalo Bills and gave the Falcons a safety. I wish they would have recovered it for a touchdown, but he went out there and did his job, made plays on special teams. Shout out, Mr. Williams. Well, we've got a musical guest later on the show, and we talked to him about ATL's kind of influence in the rap game. So we wanted to ask some of the Falcons players this week what their favorite Atlanta rappers or rap groups were and what their rap names might be in this week's Question of the Week. I would say the Gunner Amigos. I guess I grew up like just bumping Jeezy and stuff, so I guess I'll go with that. Oh, of course, Future is my favorite rapper. I got a, I got a shout out of my country, man. You know, Rascal Flatts. That's my, that's my favorite for all time. I would say my favorite Atlanta rapper is probably Lil Baby. Wow. I don't know, Day Day, Lil Day Day. <laughs> Maybe that, yeah, probably that. Lil Baby definitely got to be my favorite Atlanta rapper, uh, especially right now. He. He definitely got the game on lock. Yeah, little baby. He definitely uh he the hottest right now from Atlanta. <laughs> no idea. I'm I'm not a good rapper at all. I play around. Um it'd, it'd be it'd be like the nickname that I grew up with would probably be SB, Steve Means Business. So it'd probably be SB, that's it. I mean that's this is what come to my head first. Still to come on Rise Up Tonight, Atlanta artist 1K Few joins us in the nest later in the show. Plus, I break down a big moment in the tight red zone the Falcons defense came up short in. My film room is next on Rise Up Tonight. Welcome back to Rise Up Tonight for this week's edition of Harry's Fan Room. Going into last week's game versus the Buffalo Bills, the Falcons defense knew they were going to get tested in the pass game. Let's just say they were ready. Another test was stopping the legs and running ability of quarterback Josh Allen, especially in the tight red zone. Let's see how that went. Now we have this play right here. It's third and goal in the tight red zone. The ball's at the four yard line. And this play that the Buffalo Bills is gonna run, normally we call this play 38 truck. Josh Allen will pitch this ball to the running back. He comes around the edge. But Josh Allen keeps this ball. He's gonna gain an extra blocker. The job of these guys right here, his job is to block the first man on or off the line of scrimmage. He has the next man on or off the line of scrimmage, and then he's gonna come around and get his block. Let's see what happens. We stop it right here. You have this guy blocking who he's supposed to block. You have this little receiver blocking Deion Jones. Now, I need a better effort from Deion Jones because this little small receiver should never block him. Understand, you have to recognize Josh Allen, when you get in the tight red zone, Josh Allen is a threat with his legs. So you have to have your antennas up and anticipate some things like this. Now, not only do they have an extra blocker and a running back, they have offensive linemen pulling and come around the hump. Let's see what happens on the play. As they come around, come around, touchdown Josh Allen. But I want y'all to see it from a different view. You have Dawson Knox right here blocking down on his guy. You have Isaiah McKenzie, who is a small, small, tiny receiver, blocking Deion Jones, arguably one of your best players on defense, and then everybody else in La La Land. And then all you see is Josh Allen come around the hump with these guys, these, this guy, this guy, this guy coming to block. 
So if it's not super effort from these guys right here, there's no way this, place is go this play is going to be defended. We see him coming around the hump. Touchdown. I think a little bit better effort would allow this play to get disrupted. Back to you, Kelly. Thanks, Harry. Well, you guys might be asking yourselves, what exactly do the Falcons have to play for on Sunday? Falcons insider Tori McElhaney explains in her keys to the game. Let's be honest, the Falcons really don't have that much to play for on Sunday. They're out of playoff contention. So this Sunday's it. This last game against the Saints, that's it. But maybe the Falcons have more to play for than you think. And a lot of it actually stems from one thing, pride. I asked Arthur Smith on Monday if he felt like this 2021 Falcons team had the wherewithal and culture in place to be self-motivated going into this final game on Sunday without playoff implications on the line. His answer was telling. Arthur Smith said, with as much emotion as we've seen from him, that if the Falcons don't have that culture already in place at this point, they have the wrong people in the organization. Arthur Smith said it would be absurd if the Falcons had to trick each other and motivate each other into playing well and for something. If we have an issue with that, Arthur Smith said, they wouldn't be here. It may not seem like it without a postseason on the line, but the Falcons do have a lot to play for. There are a number of guys on one-year deals and on contract years. They're still playing for their jobs. Matt Ryan said for guys like Kyle Pitts, Jalen Mayfield, and Matt Hennessy, games are invaluable. Reps are invaluable. Most notably for fans, though, the Falcons have a chance to ruin a potential postseason run for the Saints. That, compounded with everything else that we talked about, is motivation enough for the Falcons. For Rise Up Tonight, I'm Tori McElhaney. Thanks, Tori. Well, still ahead, how Stephen Means inspired a local teen to make an impact. More on that coming up later in the show. Plus, we talk music in the A-Town with 1K Few in the Nest. Next on Rise Up Tonight. Rise Up Tonight is presented by AT&T and brought to you by Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. By Home Depot, how doers get more done. By Mercedes-Benz, the best of nothing. And by Truett's, committed to a better future. Welcome back to Rise Up Tonight, and it's time to hop into the nest with Kelly, Harry, and tonight's influencer, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. We're excited to welcome in the nest artist 1K Few, one of Atlanta's own. I was reading your record label's president, descri president described your style as hip hop that is equally at home in the club or in the church, which I really love. What does that kind of mean to you? Man, just really being yourself and being authentic to who you are, no matter where you at, like no matter where your surroundings are. It's like with me, I'm just going to be myself. I ain't really going to put on for nobody. I'm just going to stick to my purpose of what I'm really supposed to be moving to do. So, I mean, I can be in the, sh the church or in the club. But I'm still going to stand on what I'm standing on. So I'm just going to be 1,000 who I am. I respect that a lot, man. I respect that a lot. That means a lot to not just your fans, but to this world, because we don't have many out here that's doing that. So I, I got to ask you, in this music business, man, when did you know music was actually your calling? Man, like, I really grew up, like, you know, in Atlanta, just being from Atlanta and the culture. Like, I always, you know, looked up to artists like Ludacris and T.I. and just growing up, seeing them on the TV and watching their music videos and just being engaged in the culture for real. And um, I just tapped in at a young age and um, just kind of played around with it for a hobby and the talent. Um, and then as I kept going with it and the route I was going, like more doors opened and more opportunities came to me. And I just, you know, then dropped the ball on them. You know, I, I, I know a lot of people who got, you know, different chances and different opportunities come their way and they, they kind of dropped the ball on it and they didn't really, you know, take uh, they took it for granted. You feel what I'm saying? And yeah. all the small opportunities and small, you know, things that came my way, I just didn't take it for granted. And I really, you know, stood on it and really, you know, found my way and found my lane and what I was doing. Atlanta has always been kind of this force in hip hop culture. You mentioned some names from the past, but it's also kind of entering this new phase. I mean, why do you think that Atlanta has remained this stronghold in hip hop culture? Man, we the wave, man. And everybody, you know, you know, most people from Atlanta know how to stay in their lane and, and, and stay they self. And that's really what it's about being a leader, you know, and um, Atlanta birthed, you know, we, we birthed a lot of leaders. You feel what I'm saying? And I feel like being a leader really, outspeaks the music, you feel what I'm saying? I feel like the music comes after that. It's like, you really gotta be a leader. You really gotta have people believing in you and following you. And, um, you know, the music will come with that. You feel what I'm saying? And that's really what I 
what I try to stand on and try to move on. I, I, I try to, you know, stand on my leadership and stand on my character. Obviously, sports is a big part of Atlanta culture down here, too. I mean, what memories do you have of the Falcons and maybe your favorite players on the team there? Man, you know, I've been in, I'm an Atlanta baby. I, but <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, the, the furthest I can remember is when Dan Reeves was coach. When, and uh, it was Jamal Anderson. And uh, we had all them boys on there. That's the furthest I can, you know, remember when I first started getting into it. And um, of course, the Michael Vick era, you know, I was a huge Mike Vick fan. I'll never forget. Uh, I went to Flowery Branch uh, to see the practice with my pops. And um, Mike Vick, he came out. He came to the side to sign autograph. It was like a huge crowd around, like probably like 100 or 200 people and stuff like that. So it was at the top of the hill. And I told my dad, I'm like, nah, I'm about to go down there and get an autograph. I had a Michael <laughs> Vick jersey. I said, I'm about, to go down and get, I'm about to go down and get an autograph. And then my dad was like, man, ain't hey, no way you going to weave through that big old crowd. Like, the crowd was huge. Man, my little self came in. I, I was so determined to get that autograph. I'm talking about I'm being rude, stepping on people's feet, weaving through the crowd. And I finally got to the front and I, I finally seen him. And I just stuck my jersey out. He took my jersey, signed my jersey. I ran back to my dad, man. Too happy. Too happy. I still got that jersey. And uh, I'll, ne I'll never forget that moment ever in my life. That's awesome. Well, good stuff. Thank you so much for your time. Anyone who wants to catch the full conversation, head to fox5atlanta.com, and we'll be right back on Rise Up Tonight. Amid the Falcons' Rise Up and Vote campaign last year, a local high school football player was inspired to follow in one Falcon's footsteps. And our Victor Prieto had a special message for that player this week as we Rise Up for Atlanta, brought to you by Truist. Booker T. Washington High School senior King Walker looks up to Stephen Means. Both stand at six foot three and play linebacker for their respective football teams. When Means spoke on a Zoom last year as part of the Falcons' Rise Up and Vote initiative, something stuck with the then 17-year-old Walker listening in. Seeing somebody, you know, being where you being where you want to be at, care about the same things you care about, you know, makes you care about the things more. Joining Democracy Class Atlanta, a program designed to introduce high school students to the fundamentals of democracy and being appointed to a six student advisory council, Walker got over 35 of his friends to vote, a feat which has helped him earn the Falcons honorary captain for Inspire Change game this Sunday against the Saints. But yeah, I went to like, almost every classroom for 12th graders and tried to get them to sign up. And like all my friends, they, they pretty much 18 and I tell them I got them to register to vote and they went out and voted on the runoff and the election for the mayor of Atlanta. Means and Walker haven't spoken since the Zoom King credits for changing his perspective on voting, but we asked Walker what he'd tell Means one year later and showed the Falcons linebacker. I'm gonna, uh, say, tell him thank you for all the things he have done to impact our community and like help people like me, um, help people like me look up to people like him and uh, continue to set the example for like people to come after me. And his little words sparked the, sparked the, um, sparked the interest in me. Like, I was always interested in him, but, but him caring about it, you know, sparked a bigger interest in me. That's crazy, that's crazy, damn. That's dope, man. That's dope. <laughs> you just you get on a call, a Zoom call, you think some you think most kids not really listening, not tuned in, and then you know you just speak your truth and you got guys that go out and make amazing change already this early. Man, I hope he go out and be a politician that go far and like really change the game and that that's dope. Like King Walker, man, I I applaud him to the to the fullest. That's big. That's big time. For Fox 5 Sports, I'm Victor Prieto. Thanks, Victor. And for Atlanta Falcons season ticket information, including new member benefits, scan this QR code right now to learn more. Thank you guys so much for following along all season long here on Rise Up tonight. It's been my favorite part of football season to do this show with you, Harry. I really appreciate it. Um, and all you guys watching at home. Good night.